Hi everybody, this is Angel Arts and welcome to yet another audition for my upcoming Pokemon tabletop campaign. And today we are uh, here with Roma. Say hi Roma. Hi everyone. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so we're gonna just dive right in and go straight into the uh, out of character questions. Okay. What is it about the Pokemon universe slash franchise that you are passionate about? Okay, well, for me, it was always about the exploration and mm -hmm. kind of the, the sense of wonder that Pokemon can bring. It's like, we all know that the story aspect of Pokemon is usually not the best. It's usually just very simple. It's very, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a game meant for kids. It's not supposed to be super complicated. So, but for, for us, I feel like the real, uh, the real wonder and awe comes from exploring and seeing what's out there. So for me, I imagine the first time I saw a Taurus, for example, in the safari zone, mm -hmm. that was that was just such an incredible feeling. <laughs> I wanted that, and it's still one of my favorite Pokemon to this day. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it is about Taurus, but <laughs> yeah, so I... Of course, these days, the sense of wonder and exploration comes from much bigger games like Skyrim, you know, Dragon Age, all of those games. But Pokemon was the first game that did it for mm. me. Little 12 year old Roma. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> oh, <that's... laughs> so cute. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> all right. My second question is, what is it about tabletop gaming that you are passionate about or interests you or intrigues you? Okay, um, I'm, I've done a little bit of acting as a hobby. I do a little bit of fiction writing as a hobby. <laughs> just, um, these are just things that I enjoy doing and I think it's very fun. And tabletop gaming, it's kind of like, it's like telling a story in real time combined with acting. <laughs> yeah. And for me, I'm very, I'm very, very interested in that and I, I've been interested in it for a while, but I just never had the opportunity to join. There, there is a there is a tabletop group that joint that meets here uh, every week. And one week I didn't join; I just kind of sat near them and I observed mm. from a distance. And some of the people there, they clearly been doing this for a very long time, and they were very intense. There was no real role playing; it was all combat. And there was. There was one member of the group that was kind of new and he they I I could see they were kind of annoyed by by him. Oh, okay. So I said I said, "Okay, well I this isn't the right group for me then." Gotcha. They were annoyed <laughs> but, because um, he wasn't like able to play the game properly in their in their eyes. Okay. Yeah, he asked a lot of questions and oh. he yeah, and and I felt like that wouldn't be a very safe environment person i personally yeah find it i i personally am repulsed when people are not more understanding with new players because yeah <laughs> the game tabletop gaming in of itself can be an overwhelming thing to get into um, it is <laughs> it's it, it takes people out of their comfort zone to begin with so having their friends look down on them for stuff they don't understand that really saddens me so yes. i feel bad for your friend that he or she had that experience, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so next question. Mm -hmm. What do you believe makes you a good player to play with? <clears throat> well, I, <clears throat> I am a very new person to this whole thing, as, as uh, I've mentioned in my audition video, but I follow along very well with what other people are doing, mm -hmm. and so, I will not. I will not try to dominate. <laughs> I will not try to dominate the conversation at any point. I will try to, of course, contribute, but I will go along with what other people say. And uh, it's to me, it's kind of like the the whole campfire story thing, where one person says a line, the next person says a line. And what I remember from those is, it's never fun when one person says, "Oh, well, well." He then he went into the haunted house, and then the next person says, "No, he didn't, because that's very oh. bad." Mm -hmm. it, it's no fun when it when it does that. So my plan is definitely to kind of go with the flow and see how Molly would react instead of trying to keep her from doing it. 
what do you believe will your will be your biggest challenge as a player and how do you think you might try to overcome that challenge okay well of course being a being a new person to this whole thing it will be a little bit uh, overwhelming for me at first i think and the the I think the most challenging thing will be to just uh, speak out more often. I think that will be the most challenging thing because my my instinct is to watch and see what everyone else is doing. But the way I plan to the way I plan to get around this is I wrote Molly as as kind of a kind of a uh, snarky sarcastic person like mm -hmm. she's had a t she's had a difficult time but she has a kind of a sense of humor about the whole thing and so i think that will help me uh help me pipe in <laughs> whenever she has something to say i think that's a very good idea <laughs> a very good idea i i have had other players who consider themselves to be quieter so they mm -hmm. try to make a character that is a little bit more social yes. and i think it's helped them a lot so Hopefully that will help you too. <laughs> My last question, hopefully yes. is a fun question. So as you okay. know, part of this campaign will not only be you playing the role of Molly, but also playing somebody else's Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So if you could be any non-legendary Pokemon, any non-legendary Pokemon in the Pokemon universe, what Pokemon would you like to be and why? Okay. Um, I... I have a kind of soft spot for water type Pokemon, mm -hmm. so I would guess I would I would say probably Squirtle, okay, or that Good that particular that particular family line because mm -hmm. uh, Squirtle he he's usually my first choice whenever I whenever I make a new playthrough of a, a Fire mm -hmm. Red Leaf Green or or um, uh, X and Y mm -hmm. when we have to make that choice. Squirtle is usually my choice, and I know Charmander gets a lot of love from everyone, but Squirtle has always been my favorite one because, first of all, he's he's a tough little guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like he's he has very high defense, which is very uh, useful in game, and I like that because I I don't see myself as a very strong buff person. Okay, <laughs> but I like so I like to I like to. Uh, feel a connection with Squirtle because he's a tough little guy and he also hits hard. So awesome. <laughs> that's why I like him. <laughs> okay, great. Well, that was the right. end of the first half, Roma. Good stuff. All right. You're halfway done. So Thank you. <laughs> now we're going to do the in-character portion where you get to role play as Molly. And what job or program do you think Molly will be applying for? Okay. Uh, I think she will be applying as a delivery person. Okay. Like just deliv de delivering packages or something. Okay, so delivering packages as opposed to like pizza delivery or food delivery. You, you yeah, definitely packages. Yes. Heavy packages. <clears throat> okay, great, mm -hmm. great, great. So mm -hmm. Molly, we'll say that um, you found this job posting online and one of the things that's required in order to do this, to complete this process is you're supposed to come in person to this hiring agency with your paperwork um, mm -hmm. And they explained that they will put you through some screening just to get a better idea if you'd be a good fit for this for this job. Right. So you go into some double doors that automatically open up. The place in here is very clean, very white, sterile maybe, except for the fact that there are lots of posters of, you know, that about hiring, about job openings. There's like bulletin boards that has, you know, help wanted, like... Uh, people that go in and they, they like staple some help wanted things onto there. So this is clearly a place where a lot of people try to go to find a job and you go okay. over to the front desk and there's a gentleman there um, who is ready to take your paperwork. Um, we'll say that you hand over the paperwork. He takes a look through it and says, ah, oh, delivery job. Um, then he takes a big stamper and he gives it a stamp. And then he says, oh, hey, is, is that it? Am I done? Oh, no, not not so fast, oh. young lady. We still have to go through the actual screening process. So okay. uh, he, he hands the papers back to you and he says, take these papers over, walk down the hall that way to room 797, and Madame Vu will be there to do your actual screening. Good luck. 
just so, warning you. He said it's a little, it might seem a little, a little unorthodox, but it's sort of something that we're trying out here at this agency. So Molly's going to walk down the hallway and she's going to think to herself, unorthodox. Well, I kind of fit that. So let's see what happens. <clears throat> you go down and you see um, a, you see a, um, a door eventually that has the word 797 written on like some sort of piece of cardboard that's been taped to the door. And if you were to take a peek right behind it, you can see that um, there is a, uh, it actually is taped over something that says janitor. So this used to be the janitor closet, apparently, but now okay. there's this big, you know, 797, like, number taped over it. Okay. I, I kind of... Yeah. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what I applied for, but okay. So I walk in. You open the door, you walk in, and the me first thing that you notice is, number one, the, the scent of incense starts to flow in and starts to invade your nostrils. The second thing that you notice is that there's a beaded curtain in front of you, and you can hear soft music coming from inside. And you hear a voice say, Ah, come in, darling, come in. Uh... I'm, this is the right room, right? Uh, I'm here for a delivery job? Yes, you are here for screening. Come in so that Madame Vu can have a good look at you. So she will kind of cautiously walk in, kind of always, always looking around to see <laughs> what's yes. around me. You will I'll cautiously walk her. in and there will be a woman who is sitting behind a crystal ball so mm -hmm. there's this whole setup where you see a whole bunch of candles lit around and there's a big giant table with a big crystal ball in front of this and this woman dressed in very extravagant um you know psychic garb clearly this seems to be some sort of mind reader psychic kind of person and she gives mm -hmm. you a very uh, quick smile as um with as her hands you know flutter open you can see that she has relatively long fingernails exquisitely long fingernails and she says come in darling come in to madame vu's Molly will kind of look around a little bit and she'll say Th thank you for s seeing me can, i'll sit i'll sit down okay. ah you have a hard time <laughs> speaking without your hands as well. I have the exact same problem, dear. They say that if they tied my hands behind my back, I would be completely mute. But, at any rate, welcome to your screening. I am Madame Vu, Deja Vu, but you can call me Madame Vu. I know all, see all, at least in reference to you, about this job. And I believe you said, wait a moment, wait a moment. You are applying for a delivery job. That is correct? Y yes, that is correct. Uh, oh, I mean, <clears throat> yes, that is correct. Ah. You have seen correctly. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I will ask you a series of questions. As long as you answer truthfully, my dear, everything will be just fine. I just want to make sure that by hearing your answers, we can be sure that you are a perfect fit for the job. Are you ready? She's just going to go with it. She's, yes, I am ready. Please ask me. All right. She takes a deep breath. <laughs> And then she places her hands over her forehead, focusing on the crystal ball. And she starts to make some very weird <clears throat> noises. Molly's, Molly's going to kind, kind of start smirking. She's going to cover. Mm. Then suddenly, <gasps> I see in your distant past or not so distant past. Bars, metal bars, 
Do you mind explaining that to me, dear? Well, uh, I was in jail recently. Um, that won't be a problem, will it? No, she says. <laughs> we are welcome to hire all types as long as we believe that they are good and dutiful for their job. As long as you claim that it will not be a problem, I do not think the employer will care. <laughs> Why, if your employer were to ask you about said thing, why do you believe you would be a good fit for this job, despite your sordid past? Molly kind of smiles and she says, well, I have a crowbat and crowbats are very fast and I can make the deliveries very quickly. Ah, yes. I was about to say that I saw such a Pokemon in your bonds of friendship. You have known this Pokemon for quite some time. Yes, I see this now. And so you believe that this Pokemon would do well with helping with your deliveries. <clears throat> but... Yes. You did not fully answer my question, dear. Despite the usefulness of your Zubat, Bullet, I believe is its name. She's kind of so shocked and yes, that's right, yes. How would you respond to your employer if he asked about your criminal past? <clears throat> I would say, well, Simply put, I did my time. I did well. I talked to the psychologist. She's the one who uh, found this job for me. A very honest answer, which is exactly what Madame Vu is looking for. Next question, she says. Okay. What do you hope? I want to hear this from your words, dear. What do you hope you will get out of this job? Mm. Ob obviously, uh, obviously some money so I don't have to starve to death. <laughs> Honest answer. Yes. Just <clears throat> making sure that that was all that this job is to you and if that is if that it truly is then so be it just curious <laughs> well uh well food is one thing that's not free but other things are also not free molly clearly doesn't have much experience <laughs> with uh with interviewing and she says uh clothes aren't free um you mean clothes she says as she's raising her hands up uh yes yes clothes are not yes. free yes water is not free electricity is not free now you speak my language i like you <laughs> all right she says i have finished with the screening questions themselves but there is one thing that I would like to ask of you before I send you on your way. If you will, I would like to do a psychological exercise. Tell me, dear, are you familiar with the three card tarot reading? Um, I don't, <clears throat> I, I don't believe I have ever uh, see, seen this card reading? Well, let, allow me to explain it to you then. The three tarot reading works as follows. The fortune teller, such as myself, has a deck of tarot cards of which she chooses three cards and places them in front of her. One card represents your past. One card represents your present. And the last card, surprise, surprise, represents your future. The fortune teller then looks at the tarot cards 
and makes a reading, makes an interpretation of these cards based on the past, present, future. What we will do today is going to be sort of the reverse. I have this deck of cards that I would like you to look through, and she'll hand you a deck. It's not a set of tarot cards. What this is is actually a set of cards that each has on each card one of the different Pokemon types. Look through these cards. I want you to choose one card to represent your past, one to represent your present, and the last one to represent your future. And I want you to explain your thought processes as to why these you believe represent your past, present, and future. Okay. She will kind of go through. And for the past, she picks dark. Dark. She puts it down. Well, I, since you can see everything, I guess, uh, you know I was in jail, and I guess you know what happened before that. She, um, she will nod a little bit. We don't have to get into any details verbally. I just wanted to hear your interpretation of your life, where it was, where it is, and where it's going. <clears throat> that is the psychological exercise. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, dark, definitely for past. Uh, but I feel like, I feel like it, it made me strong. I feel like it made me very, uh, it made me able to handle anything. And that's why I'm choosing rock for my present. That makes a lot of sense. There is nothing that we can do about the past. All we can do is to gain whatever benefits we can for the present and future. Speaking of the future. She takes much longer to do this part. Mm -hmm. She's shaking her head. No, no. And finally, finally, she, for the future, she pulls out poison. Poison? A very interesting choice. I'm curious why. That is the better question. Well, because, and she smiles again. Every time she talks about bullet, she smiles. Um. She says, well, I have a crowbat and he is my future now. Everything I do from now on depends on him, and it's for him. She That's says, why. Poison is a very powerful element, and it can be used for good or for ill. We shall see which way you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Is, is that all, Madame Vu? Yes. I have learned enough, heard enough, to allow you to move on through the screening process. And then she will give it a stamp on your paper. One more thing before you leave, dear. If you will go into the next room, down the hall, there will be a person there ready for you to speak into the camera directly to your future employer. And I would like for you to tell in your own words to Give your pitch as to why your employer should select you for the job. Uh, will there be incense in there? Because I feel a little dizzy uh, from all of this. <laughs> <laughs> she laughed. I'm kidding, of course, of course. <laughs> Off with you now. And good luck. Mm -hmm. And she will, you know... Give this, not, not rudely shoo you away, but just give you a, you're a dismiss. You're, you're dismissed. Mm -hmm. And um, you will, you know, you will make your way out and then you will go down the hall. And I would like for you now, in character as Molly, mm -hmm. to look at the camera and tell the viewers who are watching <laughs> why they should pick you for this job. Boss, um, f f future boss, maybe. Um, so... I guess uh, by now, maybe you've heard, uh, you've seen my papers. 
Uh, I'm sorry for any misspellings I may have made. Um, I'm sure you've heard of Madame Vu's uh, card test. Um, anyway, uh, I hope you will hire me. Um, I don't have honest... <sighs> she relaxes. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> I don't have that much to offer, honestly. But I will do my best. I, uh... I've come too far from my life. I... And I can't go back to jail. If I go back to jail, I'll lose Bullet. And... and she just kind of gets more desperate. Like, just please, please, just just hire me, okay? I, I want... I don't want to go back to where I was before. Uh, and she she lightens up a bit, and uh, uh, and you know Crobat is the, one of the fastest Pokemon. I mean, he he can he, we can d make your deliveries very fast. You get very good reviews. Just think of that. Anyway, uh, I hope uh, I hope to hear from you soon. Um, kind of stands up awkwardly and walks away. <laughs> 